I think um, I see a lot of parallels between the annexation of Crimea and the Russian aggression in Donbass, which was a quite hidden aggression. I mean, hidden for the Western public, at least, not so much for people who got a little bit involved and were a little bit deeper, digging a little bit deeper into this topic. But what we could see in 2014 after uh, the annexation, there was some kind of uh, public reaction. Oh my God, what Russia is doing. And after we imposed sanctions and the Russian disinformation uh, machine started to confuse the audiences uh, all around the world, people um, got more and more filled and um, with Russian narratives, uh, with Russian ideas. Um, um, more and more the idea developed in their minds that Ukraine is to blame, that Ukraine actually deserved it because of some reasons. And they were looking for um, any possibility to blame the victim instead of the aggressor. And now, um, after the full-scale invasion, um, you know, which happened last year, um, we can see that the same is happening. But on a different scale, because we have to understand this is a full-scale invasion that Russia um, still probably plans to invade uh, Kyiv, for instance, to overthrow the government, to, to um, install a puppet regime and to annex officially uh, huge uh, territories of Ukraine. And still we have the same situation that on the beginning there was this shock yeah, and a lot of people talked about how uh, terrible this situation is. And now more and more people are defending the actions of Russia, are blaming Ukraine. We have this, this victim blaming or both sides listen when they uh, say things like um, they should just negotiate and they need to solve the problem. Both sides need to de-escalate, something like that. And this is the result of the Russian disinformation and propaganda that is um, very successful and worldwide, not only in Western societies, of course. Uh, I think the Balkan is a very um, important region for Russian disinformation. It's an important target region. And I guess it seems, at least what we can see from the last months, that they have uh, a very sophisticated strategy uh, in which they target this area. If you compare countries like Serbia and Kosovo, you see huge differences, of course. Uh, Kosovo is a, a pro-Western, pro, uh, very pro-European country, uh, has very good warm relations with the West. So Russian disinformation, when it targets Kosovo, it's more about destroying unity, creating um, trust issues with the government, so telling the people in Kosovo that everything is bad, they should not rely on the West, and, and um, somehow divide the society. On the other hand, if you take a look at Serbia, which is a very old um, ally uh, of the Russian Federation, of course there are historical reasons also for that, but um, basically um, the strategy is very different. Uh, it's more about using um, Serbian uh, people, population and, and media, but also our Serbian diaspora in the West, which is quite huge, as proxies in their disinformation war. Um, when I say proxies, I mean in the sense of they are like puppets that repeat the Kremlin's narratives and propaganda also on social media. And they were uh, very uh, successful in this because even if a lot of Serbian people have the same ideology, when they uh, immigrate to Western countries, they learn the languages there. They are quite integrated in that sense. So you have a lot, millions of people who speak English, Spanish, German, and they can um, reproduce the Kremlin's narratives about Ukraine, can tell everybody at work that they are fascists, that they uh, want to uh, kill ethnic Russians in Ukraine and, and uh, old stories like that. And uh, people listen to them because they are Slavic people. They think even they are experts because they confuse um, all this because people in Western Europe, unfortunately, have a lack of education about Southeastern Europe, about Northeastern Europe. And this is what the Kremlin propaganda is, is using. Yeah? And um, another goal is, of course, to gain influence in the Balkan area. So a geostrategic interest of the Russian Federation to keep or even expand uh, influence in Serbia and surroundings. Also, um, Montenegro, of course, is a huge issue. 
And when we speak about trolls, uh, we speak mostly about real people. So they actually exist. Yeah. So there are people sitting somewhere on a keyboard or on a phone. I'm reproducing propaganda, so not bots, because bots usually are very stupid. You can only amplify some propaganda channels. Huh? And uh, what we see about the trolls is that they they are very much connected to these topics. Yeah. So they have, if, if you speak about Serbians, they, they have actually two topics. One is about their domestic uh, situation or about Kosovo. They um, always spread. Um, Kosovo is Serbia, the old stories about uh, 1999, their narrative and everything, and uh, about Ukraine. Yeah? So about that the Ukrainians are to blame. Yeah? So this is uh, quite visible, but we don't know anything about the amount. We don't know how many pro-Russian trolls are outside because it's very difficult to measure it. And we have no clue how many of them are real people. Yeah? And this makes um, the whole disinformation analysis very difficult. We can say uh, what the narratives are. We can um, at least collect all the stories that are somehow relevant. Yeah, they all hold the fake stories, but we have no real adequate data about uh, the amount of trolls and where they come from. Uh, this is the problem with social media. Um, you mentioned uh, media journalists and fact checkers. I think. Um, it is very uh, crucial that uh, journalists and media um, is, first of all, not uh, creating disinformation themselves. And uh, they should be very self-critical, um, no matter on which side they are, you know, because this is very important. So people trust uh, media. We, we have trust issues um, in, in any country, no matter how good the freedom of the press uh, is developed. But I think um, what we should uh, really take care about in the next months is that uh, the media uh, should put some effort into debunking um, the common narratives that we can see, the common disinformation narratives. Yeah? Because in, we have a situation where it's like you have A, what you read at the media, and B, you have some so-called alternative media or social media trolling. Yeah? And then they, 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 this creates this false balance. Yeah? We have also a problem that we uh, give very much screen time to, to people who are not qualified to speak about certain issues. And people, it was also during the pandemic, and people who um, even spread, for instance, Russian um, narratives. Yeah? And it's like the media wants to be neutral and they get, go to this table to, to create a kind of round table. And you have two people uh, spreading the Putin version of something and two people spreading the actual truth. Eh? But um, as somebody who is watching television, you think, OK, maybe the truth is in the middle or something, but it's not. Eh? So uh, this is very dangerous. So the media should um, act more responsible about this information. And of course, also um, social media channels like Facebook, Twitter, um, they put some effort into this topic, but not enough yet.